Okay, that's gonna be my harmonic chunk. Or with diminished seventh chord. And now let's convert this into a lick. And let's do another one. Or maybe something like this. Now let's take this one and push it through a bunch of keys. Cheers people! Main character of this video is a thing that I just call 7-1, which to me not just implies a harmonic progression, but as well some sort of motivic potential. If treated the right way, this is a super mighty tool that everybody needs to know. So what's a 7-1 and how does it relate to the harmonies? First of all, the numbers 7-1 refer to scale degrees in a major or minor scale. I'm specifically referring to the leading tone here. So when I mention a 7-1 in a minor context, I always mean the raised 7th degree, the leading tone. In terms of the rule of the octave, where a standard set of harmonic grammar is drawn from the scale, the 7-1 connection implies a very specific harmonization, most evidently a dominant resolving into its tonic. You will never see a chord on the leading tone, that's not a dominant. And dominance can occur in a lot of different voicings and shapes. And of course as diminished 7th chords. So it doesn't really make much of a difference whether the chord is a dominant 7th or a diminished 7th chord. They both serve the same fundamental function. I would start by internalizing these small progressions in as many keys as possible. You've probably heard this before. When it comes to improvisation, muscle memory is everything. And if you can quickly find a few of these progressions in different keys right on the spot, only then you're ready to move on to the next exercises which is chaining up secondary dominance. You can link 7-1 progressions into a chain by targeting successive secondary chords of the original key. This not only serves as a great exercise, but also naturally creates a harmonic sequence. I show you two different versions of how to do this. as well with descending direction. A more abstract but very effective exercise is to draw real sequences from seven ones. This can either be seen as a circle of fifths when you follow the root progression of each chord, but can as well be analyzed as a succession of seven ones in major keys that precedes by whole tone. Sounds like this. I recommend to do these exercises with all kinds of different dominant voicings and I'm sure everybody will find their personal favorites in that. So when you're feeling fit with some of the voicings and the procedure of shifting them through different keys, then you're ready for the next step. Which is to turn the choral modules into little motivic chunks like the ones you can see on this table. And there is another one like this among the materials related to this video on my Patreon. So let me show you how to juggle with this kind of stuff. 
but it's better if you don't push yourself too hard. So I recommend to begin with figurations that can be drawn right from the chords voicings, like this one, because the more elaborated your textural idea is, the more demanding becomes an exercise like the following one. same thing with a little more elaborated motivic constructions like this one that's still based on exactly the same outer voice framework. The chunk shows a clear division of component functions. The left hand provides an accompaniment based on triplets that's simply breaking the chords in a specific manner. The upper voice though provides the melodic component that's as well mainly based on the chord tones but integrates a chromatic neighbor tone towards the dominant chords fifth, which is a very common strategy. It is a demanding exercise to chain a chunk like this up as a set of secondary dominants right on the spot, but I promise this is a super effective exercise as it is already pretty close to what real improvisation is about and when you attach a cadence like in the following example, you obtain some sort of methodical prelude. <laughs> Maybe it's good to do another one like this. This time it's based on the 7-1 progression that's using the diminished 7th chord. The chunk is supposed to gather some superficial features of Brahms keyboard style. As there is the 2 against 3 rhythm and some crunchy element coming from those sentimental suspensions. smuggle a major 7th and a minor 2nd into the chords. Those suspensions on the diminished 7th chords are kind of confusing to label because as they clearly are dissonances, they are consonant to the bass. The one on the right though, definitely a 9th. Yo, let's listen and this time I will use a descending chain of secondary dominants. Okay, as this have been somewhat abstract exercises, I as well want to show you how to integrate this kind of modularity into the context of actual composition. And I'm going to start with a little theme that tries to imitate the style of the Honorable John Field. It's like the first page of a nocturne or so. Part of the theme will be a threefold sequence of seven ones. called Monte sequence is not just a random chain of secondary dominance, but is usually settled within a very specific area of the home key. As my chosen key center is F major, the Monte schema usually starts out with tonicizing the subdominant, then proceeds to the dominant and eventually hits the relative minor, that in this case will be confirmed via cadence. But of course, before hitting the sequence, I gotta settle the home key.
guess it's now time for a little but entire piece that's capitalizing on secondary dominance on the leading tone combined with a little motivic idea that's holding the whole thing together. I wanted to demonstrate how to embed a chunk like this into a whole musical form and how to use it as a tool to reasonably generate harmonic activity and motivic coherence as the music evolves. So remember, this video is part of a series about the rule of the octave. And apart from two bars, every harmonic event of the entire piece can be explained via rule of the octave modularity. So although there is no extended passages of scalar bass motions, the rule of the octave is omnipresent in the form of smaller chunks, but related to a variety of keys. Mm -hmm. 